so as to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred music. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my mysterious fault. Therefore, I ask the Holy Spirit of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Here be the end, hail every soul. presence when he had decided to release him. 
you denied the Holy and Righteous One and asked that a murderer be released to you. The author of life you put to death. But God raised him from the dead. Of this we are witnesses. Now I know, brothers, that you acted out of ignorance, just as your leaders did. But God has thus brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand, through the mouth of all the prophets, that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be wiped away. The word of the Lord.
according to
The answer is actually that it's a little bit more complicated than that. In the days of Jesus, there was lots of division about what people expected the Messiah to be like. As you all know from your times at Mass and hearing these readings from the Bible, there were different sections, different sects of Jews. You had the Pharisees and the Sadducees who we hear all about in the Gospels. They're always criticizing Jesus. The Pharisees and the Sadducees, they didn't agree on everything. The Sadducees were like the conservative party who was in control. And the Pharisees were considered to be more liberal. And so there was great animosity between those two groups. And then there were also the Essene Jews. John the Baptist, he was an Essene Jew. You probably heard of the Dead Sea Scrolls. The Dead Sea Scrolls were discovered at a, an Essene monastery outside the Dead Sea. And the Essenes, they didn't agree with the Pharisees or the Sadducees. You had the Zealot Jews. The Zealots were the ones who were most expecting this military messiah to come, and so they were always trying to stir up rebellion and revolt amongst the people. What I'm trying to say is that there was a lot of mystery. There were a lot of questions about what it would be like when the messiah would come. Some people thought he would be a military hero because they knew that many of the prophets said that he would be like King David was. And David was the greatest liberator in Israel's history. He had fought off the Philistines. He had conquered many different armies. And so people thought if the Messiah was going to be like him, maybe, maybe he will also be a great soldier. But many of the prophets, they also talked about the Messiah being like a new Moses. And so that's one of the reasons why when Jesus came on the scene, he kept saying, you have heard Moses say, but I say, he was taking the place of Moses. Instead of continuing the old Passover that Moses had established, Jesus began a new Passover. It wasn't always clear what people were expecting. And it actually is still a little bit relevant today. Right? I'm sure many of you are familiar that uh, one of the big divides between Catholics and Protestants is how many books are in our Bibles. The reason why Catholics have more books in our Bible is because even in the days of Jesus, there was no set canon of the Old Testament. All the different sects of Jews, they had different numbers of books in their Old Testament. And so what happened in the early days of the church is the church basically had to choose one of those Old Testament canons. And in the days of Martin Luther, he thought that the early church had done that incorrectly. And so he took those books out. They're books of the Old Testament, not of the New Now, what I think is most interesting about what Jesus said is that, again, he said that the Christ was going to suffer. And it's true. If you read the Old Testament, you read some of the prophecies, it talks about the suffering that would happen when the Messiah would come. When John the Baptist was arrested and killed, Jesus told his disciples that it was to fulfill the scriptures. But it was still mysterious. Prophecies are always mysterious. That's why we should be skeptical nowadays when you see televangelists on TV telling you about how all these prophecies are being fulfilled in Russia or the President or the United Nations. We should always be skeptical. Prophecies are more mysterious than that. But it is true that many of the prophets talked about the suffering of the Messiah, and the reason was simple. It had to do with the establishment of the Old Covenant. When God established his covenant with his people Israel on Mount Sinai and then again at Mount Ebal, he told the people of Israel that he would be faithful to them forever. And the people of Israel, they promised that they would be faithful to God forever as well. And what happened throughout the rest of salvation history? The people of Israel were unfaithful. And so when they had made that covenant, the people of Israel had promised fidelity and that if they had become unfaithful, there would be a number of punishments or curses that would come down upon them. And so when the people of Israel were unfaithful, they became like criminals in the eyes of the covenant. 
And so the people of Israel knew that in order for them to get out of that place of punishment, there had to be a way of making amends with the covenant infidelity that they had committed. Jesus, when he came, he himself took those punishments upon himself on the cross. He stood in the place of the condemned party and received those punishments, those curses. The letter to the Galatians says that cursed is a man who hangs on a tree. St. Paul was saying that Jesus took the place of the condemned criminal so that you and I might no longer be considered criminals. But sons and daughters and friends. <coughs> In order for that reconciliation to take place, the punishment had to be endured. And Christ in his mercy chose to take it upon himself. He was like the lamb who was led to the slaughter. He was the one who was pierced. He was the one who became cursed for us. That is why Jesus could tell the apostles that they should have already known that it had been written that Christ would have to suffer and on the third day he would rise.
Dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God and the Almighty Father. Amen. Receive, O Lord, we pray these offerings of your exalted church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times, to claim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to lodge you more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For him the children of life rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising the life of all is risen. Therefore, overcome with passive joy, every land, every people exalts in the praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. <laughs>
let us pray. <coughs> Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's see here from the announcements. First of all, we have the Bible trivia question today. Let's see how well everybody was paying attention during the homily today. What does the word Christ mean? What does Christ mean? Mm -hmm. Got a number of hands up today. Uh, I think I saw her hand up first. Yep. What is it? The anointed one is correct. Awesome. Didn't you think she was going to say Jesus' last name? <laughs> All right, very good. All right, just some announcements uh, that the Spaghetti Supper for the Knights of Columbus, uh, the Knights of Columbus Spaghetti Supper will be next Saturday, April 20th, in the gym uh, after the 4.30 Mass. Um, the last day for religious education is next week. And the First Communion Mass will be on Saturday, April 27th at 11 a.m. So if anybody wants to come and support our students receiving the First Communion, you're more than welcome to attend. Uh, speaking of the 4.30 Mass, uh, we did a survey a number of weeks ago about whether people would like the Mass to remain at 4.30 year-round or if we should keep switching it. Um, the survey was unanimously in favor of keeping the Mass at 4.30. Okay. I haven't announced anything because so I was waiting to talk to Parish Council. And so at Parish Council, we decided that we're going to keep Mass at 4.30 uh, for, until further notice, and we'll reevaluate in a few months after the summertime. Please stand for the final blessing. <laughs> the Lord be with you. <laughs> Mighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Amen. For the prayer of St. Bernard. Heavenly Father, with the intercession of St. Bernard, we pray that you send out your Holy Spirit upon each one of us, that we may draw all souls in our county closer to your Son, Jesus Christ, and to his church. Amen. We go forward to sing number 461, crowning with many crowns, number 461. 